All right, guys, so I have gone ahead and took some time and went through here and added snow to just about everything I could think of. There's probably a few areas that need a little touch up, but for the most part, everything has snow on it. Now, one thing that I did a little different compared to the last part was instead of using the Magic Snow plugin to put snow on the ground, what I did was I created a plane and I highly subdivided it. So what I did was I just created a uh, plane object and then I took it and just kind of scaled it up here for the width and the height. And then for the segments here for the width and the height, I just took those up to a crazy amount. Uh, I don't remember exactly what it was, but as you can see, if I click on my ground plane now, you can see just how heavily subdivided it really is. So there's quite a bit of subdivisions in there. Now the reason why I did this is because instead of using the ground plane that I provided in the original scene file that you downloaded, I decided to just go ahead and make my own custom ground plane. Now you're welcome to do this if you want because I felt as though the one that was originally in here just really wasn't up to my taste. So I just went ahead and just deleted it and got rid of it and just kind of started over from scratch. And as you can see, I put in some little trails here, some little areas, and then there's some footprints here, kind of walking around. I also took the brush tool and made some little rough, bumpy areas here around some of the trees and around the base of the house. And I also put some tire tracks in here as if a vehicle had just recently pulled out of a driveway or something here. Now, one other thing that I did was I didn't want the rest of the ground to look flat because you can see other than just the areas of where these tracks are at, the rest of the ground is just all flat and it doesn't have any type of displacement to it. So I gave the plane a displacer deformer. Of course, you can get to that by going to the deformer list and there's the displacer right there. So once you give that, uh, once you make that a child of the plane object, uh, what I did was I went into it. The strength is at 100, the height is at 10 and the type is set to intensity and for the shading I used a noise shader and I changed it from regular noise over to turbulence and when I turn that back on you can see it adds some turbulent noise here to the ground level so I think that's pretty much all I'm gonna need for that because I really don't want to have to go in there and add anything more you know, and add another custom landscaping object or something to kind of help sell the idea of snow. So I think the displacer is going to do really well. Plus, we're going to add a little bit of bump to our snow material anyway. So I think the displacer plus the bump in the material is just going to help sell the idea. All right, now right now my total polygon count is, uh, let's see, polygons, we've got 2.5 million here, and over here in parentheses we have 2.8 million. So it's right about 2.5 million polygons. So that's, that's a lot, but it's not really a lot considering that this could go a whole lot higher. All right, so I've got snow everywhere, and the viewport right now is a little slow. So I'm going to turn the displacer off, and as soon as I turn that off, now everything is back to being nice and fluid and smooth. So just for now, until we do a final render, I'm just gonna keep that displacer off just because it helps to greatly speed up things here in the viewport. Okay, so now we've got everything covered in snow and I'm assuming that by the time you've reached this part that you as well have everything covered in snow too. So what we wanna do now is we wanna set up a camera and we wanna set up the physical properties of the camera. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a camera and I'm gonna jump into it and I'm going to right click on it and give it a V-Ray tag and we need to give it a V-Ray physical camera tag. And one thing that we want to talk about here for a moment, and I'm just going to position this down here towards the ground level a little bit. Now, since we're using the HDR image that is in the area, let me click on it here, in the area light dome, we're using this dusk blue color. So we've got a really, really nice dark color of blue. And if we render it as we did before with the standard editor camera, everything to me in my a personal opinion was that it was a little too blue. And I kind of wanted to take some of the blue out. And I don't want to get rid of all of it because it is dusk. 
and the sky is blue, so of course, in real life, you're going to get a blue shading. But I felt as though it was too strong. So I want to reduce or pull some of that blue shading out of the render. But I don't want to pull too much of it out. So the way that we do that is we can click on the physical camera tag. And down here we have white balance. Now the white balance preset is currently set to D65. So I'm just going to change this to custom. Now the way this works, and I'm just going to try to explain it as simply as I can, whatever color you want to pull out of the render is the color that you need to put into this little uh, input here for this uh, RGB value. So in this case, I know that there's, or at least I feel that there's too much blue in this render. And I want to take some of that blue out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull these sliders up just to get a bit of a blue shading here. And I think that this value here should be close to what we want to do. So I'm just going to render a region. And I'm just going to render this corner of the house right there. So I'm just going to give this a second to render. And then we'll go back. And I'm just going to take that blue and I'm going to change it to white. And then we'll render it again. Okay, now you can see something, uh, a problem that we're coming across here. And I'm kind of glad that this has happened. And the reason that it's totally black now is because we're using a physical camera, which means that we need to make adjustments uh, to the exposure and the ISO levels. So what we need to do, first of all, in order to get this to show up so we can go back to adjusting our white balance, we need to take this film ISO and we need to crank this up. So I'm going to take it up to 400. All right, so I'm going to render the region here again. And by taking up the film ISO, it's going to allow more light to come in. And you can see that it's kind of picking it up a little bit, but that's still too dark. So we're going to go with the F stop value. And I'm going to reduce this down to 4. I'm going to render it again. And this should brighten up the image more than what it was. Okay, so it's bright, but it needs to be a little brighter. So we're going to go down here to the shutter speed, and we're going to take this down to 100. I'm going to render this little region one more time. Now, if you wanted to, you could use the interactive render region. Uh, just I'm just so accustomed to just kind of clicking the render region button and then just kind of selecting the region that I want. But V-Ray will work with the interactive region. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good for now. Okay, we've got our blue color here, and you can see... Uh, the blue that's in there. It still looks blue even though we're pulling some of the blue out. So I'm going to take these values back down to where they're white and I'm going to render this again. And Now it should be a much stronger blue shading to it. And you can already see right there just how much more of a blue hue and a blue shading it has to it versus what we just saw when we pulled some of that out. Now, personally, I think that there is a little bit too strong. Now, I do like the blue color. It's kind of like a blue purplish type of color, but I'd rather pull some of that out. So I'm just going to take this back. To about there. I think that'll be just fine for now. All right, so we've got our camera set up. Uh, the position of the camera right now really doesn't matter. I'm really not too concerned about it because we're going to come back and make some adjustments and put it a little closer to the ground. All right, so what I want to do now before we start adding some interior lighting to the inside of this house and some exterior lighting as well, what I want to do is I want to fix the issue with the way the ground just stops back here. Because right now what we have is just this or what I have compared to what you may have because you may have added your own landscape. But what I've got here is just this large flat plane, which is a square. And right now you can see that if we were to render this area, I'm just gonna go from uh, the top of the horizon line and down. 
what we're going to get is above the horizon line, you're going to see the HDR sky, but below it, it's just going to be that blue shading. And of course, we don't want that, and we want to cover that up. And if we jump back into our camera, you can see that the ground just kind of stops. So from the horizon line, which is this dotted line going across the middle of the screen, all the way down to the ground plane, it's just going to be that blue color. And that's not going to look very real at all. So we need to find a way to kind of fill that in. So what I usually like to do uh, just temporarily is grab a landscape object. So let's grab a landscape. We'll go to a top view. And I'm going to pull this off over to the side. And what I want to do is I just want to make it about like that. Just kind of pull it off over here and then we need to line it up with that side you can see here that it needs to go up to where this bottom of this landscape object meets up here with uh, the edge of our little custom landscape that we built so i'm just going to take the coordinates and just take that up like that and then it needs to go over in the negative x direction so something like that. Jump back into the camera. All right, so now you can see that that is being filled in. So now if we just render, let's see, a little region like right in there. Now more than likely, uh, some of the sky is still gonna be showing through because this landscape isn't very tall. So what we need to do is we need to gradually build it up kind of give the appearance that maybe there's a little bit of a rolling hill and then it just kind of goes off into the distance where we've got some mountains in the background which are covering up the rest of the sky. As you can see right here that looks fine now we fill that in but here's the skyline and there's that color that we don't want to be seen. So what I'm going to do is just go back up here to a top view and I'm going to duplicate the landscape and just kind of push it over. what we need to do is kind of push it back this way so it's in the view of the camera because you can see the camera view let me just get the uh, the doodle tool all right so the camera field of view starts here and it goes off in that direction like that and off in that direction there so all of this in here is not going to be seen all this area here will not be seen. It's only the area in this little green area here. This is all going to be seen. So what we want to do is we want to keep these mountain ranges and all of this within the view of the camera because there's really no need in having all those extra polygons sitting way down here or back over here or somewhere back off over here where they're never going to be seen in the field of view. So there's really no reason for any of that. All right, so I'm going to take that landscape object and I want to raise it up. So we go into the object here and we want to go this value here. Actually, we can just grab a hold of the little uh, orange handle there, the little orange dot, and just kind of pull that up. And that will give us some height. And then we can just pull that up like that. Take it and drag it back over to there. All right, so let's render that little region there. And that should cover up the bottom portion of the hemispherical sky that we're using. All right, now notice we're getting some weird stuff going on down here and that's just because we need to take it and move it down so we can take the landscape object and just move it down and that should alleviate that so I'll just render that region one more time just to make sure camera is not going to be focused on that area but I want to make sure that I'm covering up all the little gaps are going to be showing through that are going to be exposing that back part of the sky. All right, so there we go. That looks pretty good. We've got that covered up. Now we need to do the same 
to the side over here. So I'm going to take this landscape object and I'm going to duplicate it. And remember that the field of view goes up over here, so we'll do something like that. We need to take this first landscape, duplicate that one as well, move that one over to here. All right, take this, and this one can be moved about maybe there. All right, so you can see that's filling in that gap over there pretty well. So let's render that just to make sure that there are no spots coming through. So it, this is all dependent, of course, upon where your camera is positioned at and what you want to see. Uh, you may have to take your little landscape objects and move them around to different locations just to ensure that everything is covered up properly. In this case, it looks like I'm only going to need four landscape objects. So I think this is going to work out pretty well for this. Uh, you may have to use more or maybe less. Like I said, it just depends on where your camera is at. Now we do have this area here. We've got this. You can see a little bit of a line. and That's the uh, portion, the back portion of one of those landscape objects where it just kind of cuts off. So what I'll do is I'll take and let's go to a different view here. Just raise that up in there. Maybe that little region one more time. And if you want to add more mountain ranges in the back, you're welcome to do that. Okay, so that looks pretty good right now. We can always go back and make adjustments to it later if needed. All right, so we've got everything set up. Now we want to start with some of the lighting. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and end this part, and then we'll just continue on and get started with the lighting in the next part.